Piali no momachtikawan, namanti momachtise, tlenica, tlapowalistli, titlapowase, a tipewase y case, wanti tlamise y casempowali, wante ipan ti momachtise, a tlenica tlen weyi, wan tlen kwekwetzin. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to count. We're going to be learning how to count from number one to number 20. And then after that, we're going to talk about words for saying big and small. Okay, so let me show, share my screen so you can see the class slides. And if something is not working, you let me know. All right, so we're going to start from, we're going to learn from one to 20 and we're going to learn about big and small. All right. <clears throat> uh, and then we're also going to extend regarding uh, last week when we learned how to use tzin. Well, tzin is also used in, in the sense of meaning for small. And so today we're going to learn how to use tzin to mean small. All right, so let's start first with yonse. Yonse. Okay, yonse. Se. Ome. Eight. I'm a sticker. Ah. I'm, a, I'm on Nikita screen. Okay. So let's see what's going on. Maybe I'm sharing the wrong screen. screen. Hold on. <clears throat> let's see. We do it. Do you see it now? Gemma. Okay. All right. Cool. So let me go back to 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 Yonse. Thank you for letting me know. La Okay. Yonse. Yonse. Se. Ome. Eyi. Nawi. Makwili. Chikwase. Chikome, Chikweyi, Chiknawi, Mahtlakli. Okay, so now we've counted up to 10. So now we're going to go past 10. Mahtlakli wan se, Mahtlakli wan ome, Mahtlakli wan eyi, or yei, it depends which variety you speak. Mahtlakli wan nawi. Mahtlakli, oh no, Kashtoli. Oh yeah, don't forget Kashtoli. <laughs> Kashtoli. Kashtoli wan se. Kashtoli wan ome. Kashtoli wan egi. And, oh, Kashtoli wan nawi. And Sempowali. Okay, so essentially those are the numbers from one to 20. Notice that I use the Mayan, these are Mayan symbols, they're not Aztec symbols. The Aztecs uh, did have numbers, but they didn't uh, use the Mayan symbols, but the Mayan symbols seem to be very good at representing the Nahuatl numbers because they're both based on a 20 base system. So that's why I'm using the, the Mayan numbers. Okay, but now I'm gonna do go over the numbers again to remind you what those numbers are. But now I'm gonna be adding the word Coscatl. If you remember what coscat is, it's necklace, okay now? So, onka yonse coscat. Onka yonse coscat, okay? So now I'm gonna, oh, now I'm gonna ask you how many necklaces there are. Actually, I'm gonna answer the question. I'm not gonna ask you. So I'm gonna ask you, keski coscat onka? I'm just gonna ask that question. So this is the answer, starting with one, okay? So, onka se coscat. Onka se coscat. Onka ome coscat. Onka egi coscat. Onka nawi coscat. Onka maquili coscat. Onka chikwase coscat. Onka Chikweyi, Coscat. Oh, I, I skipped one, huh? Chikome. Did I say Chikome? Onka Chikome, Coscat. Onka Chikweyi, Coscat. Onka Chiknawi, Coscat. Onka Mahtlakli, Coscat. 
Okay, and then when you go higher, now I'm not gonna use Coscat, I'm gonna give you an example with Totot, which is Totot right here, right? So now when we're doing an animate, we're gonna say Onka Matlakli Wan Se Totome. Onka Matlakli Wan Ome Totome. Onka Matlakli Wan Eji Totome. Onka Matlakli Wan Nawi Totome. Onka kashtoli totome. Onka kashtoli wan se totome. Onka kashtoli wan ome totome. Onka kashtoli wan eji totome. Onka kashtoli wan nawi totome. Wan onka sempowali totome. So essentially, I just redid the numbers one through 20 with an inanimate and with an animate. Um, object or noun. Okay, so if you notice now what does have a word for zero. And this word for zero is yonse. It literally comes from the word yon, which means not even and se one. So yonse is saying not even one. Or like in Spanish, ni siquiera uno. That's where the word yonse comes from, which means zero. Now, I did look, this word is the Huasteca word to say zero, and I did look up the classical word for zero, and I actually couldn't find it, so I'm not even, I'm not 100% sure if they had a word for zero in classical times, but in current modern times, this is the word that they use in the Huasteca region to say zero. Okay, and I'm using the, the Mayan symbol <clears throat> for zero, which is a shell. All right, another thing you may have noticed is I use the word Sempowali. And this simple wali is, it, it really comes from two words, the word se, which you know means one, and powali, which means um, count. So it's really saying one count. So that tells you that um, Nahuatl speakers, they, they consider one count from, from one all the way to 20. So the system before the arrival of the Spanish was based on uh, a base of 20, meaning they would count all the way from one to 20, and then it resets again. So after Sempowali comes Sempowali one se, Sempowali one ome, Sempowali one eji, et cetera, et cetera. In the future, we're gonna make a class that goes at numbers higher than 20. But for now, I know that it's a lot of words to memorize, especially if you've never seen these numbers before. Um, so, so that's why I'm giving just for now from one to 20, but eventually we'll cover numbers higher than 20 in future classes. I want you to notice that I was using Mayan symbols. And the reason I use the Mayan symbols is because in terms of like the picture of the Mayan symbol and the structure of how the words are in Nahuatl, they, um, this is a very good visual representation for you to remember the numbers. So from one through five, we know it goes se, ome, eji, nawi, and then it becomes makwili, right, with the bar. But after Makwili, basically you have the bar and then any number that you put above it. So like, if you want to say six, it's going to be chik, Chikwa se, and then it's going to become chikome, chikweyi, chiknawi. And then once you reach 10, it becomes matlakli, and any number that you add above it, it, it becomes matlakli one se, matlakli one ome, matlakli one eji, matlakli one nawi. And then it becomes 15, and then you have kashtoli, kashtoli one se, kashtoli one ome, kashtoli one eji, kashtoli one nawi. So you see how the words that are Nahuatl words, they're very well correlated with this bar and dot system, which is why I like to represent the numbers in this way, even though they're Mayan numbers. So maybe this, this guide will help you remember the order from one through 20 in the future. Wally. All right, you may have noticed that in the last example, I used the verb onka a lot. And you're probably wondering like, what the hell does onka mean? <laughs> so onka is actually, one of those words that can be applied to inanimate or animates. So if you remember in the past, I had, I had told you if you wanted to say there is a necklace, or like in this example, it's there are two necklaces, we would be using the verb el toc. We say el toc ome coscat. It means there are two necklaces. We're using the verb el toc because this, this word coscat is inanimate. So we use el toc. And then you remember if we have something animate like those birds, we, we would have said, it's toque ome totome. 
two birds are in a location or there are two birds. It's basically what this means. But with this verb onca, it, it still means there is or there are, but it can be used with either with either animate or inanimate. It doesn't matter with onca. So you could say onca ome coscat, there are two necklaces, or you could say onca ome totome, there are two birds. So basically onca is, is the verb form of there is, like this thing exists. So it would be like in Spanish, like hay dos uh, collares or hay dos pájaros. It's the I in Spanish. Um, but this verb onca also means to exist. So if I want to say like, does X, Y, Z thing exist? I would say onca, I don't know, onca, shiwit, do plants exist? And then you would say kena, onca shiwit. It has that meaning of does it actually exist in reality, but it also means is it, does, is it in a location? So that's what this verb onca means. Now notice that onca doesn't change whether it's singular or plural, it's always onca. That's how it's used in modern times. In classical times, this verb onca had the plural which was oncate. So if you go back and read classical text, you'll see that it, it, they would have said oncate, ome, totome, something like that, oncate. But now in modern Guasacanawa, they say onca for singular or, or plural, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now, Oh, okay. So now I am going to ask you, Keski Onka, how many are there? And I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and tell me how many there are. So, Keski Masegualme Onka. And I would want you to reference these numbers because obviously I cannot represent 18 people in a slide. So, reference this number and then tell me how many people there are. Keski Masegualme Onka. Onka Castoli Juan Egi Tlacame. Okay, Tlacame. Quali? Uh huh. So you said man instead of people. Quali? So Onka Castoli Juan Egi Masewalme. All right. Keski Masewalme Onka. Onka Nawi Masewalme. Kena. Onka Nawi Masewalme. Kuali. Keski Masewali Onka. Onka Matlatli Wan Nawi Masewalme. Kuali. Onka matlakli wanawi masewalme. Vale. ¿Qué es que masewalme onka? Onka ome masewalme. Vale. Onka ome masewalme. ¿Qué es que masewalme onka? Onka kastoli wan ome masewalme. Kuali. Onka kastoli wan ome masewalme. Kuali. All right. Keski shochit onka. I mean, it's kind of a contradiction with the picture, but you know, I'm trying to express an idea here. <laughs> onka. Yonse shochi. Aha. Kena. Onka yonte shochi. Quali? Keski shochit onka. Onka maklakli wanse shochit. Aha. Onka maklakli wanse shochit. Quali? Keski shochit onka. Onka eyi shochit. Quali? Onka eyi shochit. Aha. Keski shochit onka. Onka matlakli wan ome shochik. Kuali, kena. Onka matlakli wan ome shochik. Kena. And I think this is the last one. Keski shochik onka. 
<coughs> Onka chikwase chikwase um, soshit. Onka chikwase soshit. Aha. All right. So naman inin se miston. Inin se miston. Kuali. Inin se kwekwetsin miston. Inin se kwekwes kwekwetsin miston. Inin se weyi miston. Inin se weyi miston. Okay. Se miston. Se kwekwetsin miston. Kwekwetsin. One se weyi miston. Okay, quale. So in Nawat, I want to I want to point out something specific. In Nawat, adjectives can be before or after nouns. The order doesn't matter in Nawat. So you can say miston kwekwetsin or kwekwetsin miston. It doesn't matter like in Spanish or in English where there's an order. In Nawat, you can put it before or after. Or you could say miston weyi or weyi miston. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, inin se kwekwetsi miston. Inin ome kwekwetsitsin mistome. Kwekwetsitsin. Notice it's kwekwetsitsin now. Inin egi kwekwetsitsin mistome. Inin nawi kwekwetsitsin mistome. Okay. So notice that kwekwetsin becomes kwekwetsitsin. And inin se weyi miston versus inin ome we weyi mistome. Ome we weyi mistome. So whereas kwekwetsin is kwekwetsin is one and kwekwetsitsin is two or more, we weyi is one, I mean weyi is one and we weyi is more than one. Okay, but this um, second we weyi, this part is optional. So you could still say inin ome weyi mistome. Um, the plural form of, of weyi doesn't need to be used, but it can be used if you want to. Okay, so that, that word weyi, it means big, like that big cat that we saw, but it also has that other meaning of being great or being grand. Like let's say you have a great leader or a grand teacher or something, you can use that word weyi to have that meaning. So you can say weyi temachtiket, a great teacher or a grand teacher. Or maybe you've heard of like weyi tlatoani, that would be like great leader or great um, ruler uh, the Nahua speakers had, right? They had tlatoanis. So weyi can mean that, that other idea of great or grand. All right, quali. So now we have tekatli. Okay, these are tekatli, inin tekatli. Inin kwekwetsin tekatli. Okay, kwekwetsin tekatli. Or there's another way to say kwekwetsin uh, tekatli, and that is Inin piltekaktsin. Inin piltekaktsin. So both of these ways are acceptable to say kwekwetsin tekaktli or piltekaktsin. Okay. So as, as you see, the word tekaktli, it means shoe. But, and you can use that word as a separate word, just saying kwekwetsin tekaktli or tekaktli kwekwetsin, whichever way you want to say it to mean small shoe. But now it has another way to also make something small. And that is taking that noun, tekatli, and adding pil to it and sin at the end. So that sin that we learned last week is this is where you use it as the meaning of small. So we say pil tekaktsin, it also means small shoe. So this word pili, it comes from um, the word for child or for noble person. If you go and learn on classical Nahuatl, you'll learn that they would say pili for child. And some varieties of central Nahuatl still use pili to mean child. 
So he's saying, no pilwan, my children, that, that's com per perfectly understandable today still. No pilwan, my children. So pili basically means child. And if you also look um, back in history, you'll see that pili also meant like noble person. So like, I believe there's like a God called Siwapili or there's different um, deities that have the word pili in them. And that pili is just like a noble person. So pili means child or noble person. So in order to create the small version of something in Nahuatl, you're going to take that noun and then you're going to remove the absolutive, which is that last ending, the TL, the TLI, the, L, the LI, and the IN. And then you're going to add the PIL and the TSIN. Um, you're going to remove that back part and you're going to replace it with TSIN and then you're going to put PIL in front of it. So you want to say siwat woman, you want to say little woman, it would become pil siwatsin. If you have um, ego, kwahtli, or kwahtli, you would change it to pil kwahtsin, little ego. You want to say masewali, person, make it small, little person, pil masewaltsin, little person. And you'll say totolin, which I think, I believe means turkey, it would be pil totolsin, little turkey. Um, and if you remember from last lecture, anything that ends in sin, whenever it, if you have a word that ends in sin and you want to make more than one of it, then you, it, it becomes titsin. So if you have little woman, it'd be pil siwatsin. But if you want to say little women, it would be pil siwatsitsin, pil siwatsitsin. So that titsin will applies to any noun that has sin to it. So now I'm going to ask you, Keniki Moilia. How do you say? All right. Keniki Moilia Ikanawat, book. Amoshli. Amoshli. So this one's easy, right? Kuali. How would you say Keniki Moilia, little book? Moilia Il Amoshin. Mm -hmm. That's one way, is pila moshtsin, and then there's another way. Kwekwetsina moshli. Aha, kena. So you have kwekwetsina moshli, or you have pila moshtsin. Pila moshtsin. Wali. Keniki moilia, big book. Wei a moshli. Wei a moshli. Wali. Okay, Keniki Moilia Butterfly. Moilia Papalot. Uh -huh. Papalot. Papalot. Keniki Moilia Little Butterfly. Quequetsin Papalot. Again, Quequetsin Papalot. Or. Pil. Pil Papatsin. I think I... Yeah, you're getting, you're almost there, but you're missing one syllable in there. Is it pil papalotsin? Gena, pil papalotsin. Pil papalotsin. If you think about this word pil, you're literally saying like child butterfly, but it now it means, it now means little. Okay, keniki moilia little butterfly. Quequetzitzin papalome. Kena, quequetzitzin papalome. That's one way to say it. Quequetzitzin uh -huh. papalome. So notice that quequetzin becomes quequetzitzin and papalot becomes papalome. Quali. Pil papalotzitzin. Aha, uh -huh. that's the other one. Pil papalotzitzin. Pil papalotzitzin. Little butterfly. Keniki Moilia, big butterfly. Wei papalot. Wei papalot. And Keniki Moilia, big butterflies. Wei papalome. Wei papalome, or did I put it? Oh, yeah. Wei, wei papalome. So you can use this way or this way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter in that one. Okay. Wow, my class was shorter than I thought. I had like 100 slides <laughs> or 80 slides. Okay, well, wow. Okay, normally it's not this short, this class, but I thought I had it, had it timed right since 
I had like 80 ish slides, which is about how many slides I normally have. I guess the numbers went by fast. Okay, so we have onka, which is there is or are, um, or it exists, and that can be used with inanimates or animates. Quequetzin is the standalone word for small. And then we have pil, and then the noun, and then sin, it means small. And actually, the word pilsin, it also means small. So I, I probably should add that pilsin, it also means small. Um, Weyi, um, big, and tecatli shu, because that was a new word. Next week, we're going to talk about colors. So we're going to ask you, tlen i shneska, what color is it? And I'm sorry that the class was so short. I didn't think it'd be this short. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing, I guess. I just thought I did, I did so many slides. <laughs> How many? Yeah, there's like 87 slides, which is normally enough. The visual good. representations you used for the numbers was, probably took a long time. But I actually, uh, uh, it really makes a lot of sense. I, I kind of like how those are used with the, um, you go through one through four after mm -hmm. each five, I guess. It's mm -hmm. kind of neat. Yeah, that's the pattern that Nahuatl follows. It's that 20 base pattern. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. When I saw that come up, I was like, oh, this makes it so much easier than trying to memorize it all. Exactly. When I first learned it, I was like, oh my God, there's so many words. But then I was like, wait, this is exactly like the Mayan numbers. <laughs> yeah, especially when it gets into the 30s and 40s. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, so once we do like 20, 40, it becomes ompo wali, right? And then you use the visual representation of the Mayan numbers, it's super clear. But if you if you don't use them, it's uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of harder to learn or memorize, and I, that's why I think this is the natural way to um, teach it, or at least to learn it. Maybe you're not going to use these numbers like normally, but if you used it with this visual representation, so much easier, in my opinion. I I figured out how to multiply in in bars and um and dots and it is easier to multiply in bars and dots than it is in um in the way that we learn it in school with uh, arabic numbers or Rome. yeah arabic numbers i don't know anyway can you show a quick example of that <clears throat> well nah okay yes but uh i was gonna hold it for later when we learn higher numbers that was gonna be what i'm gonna i was gonna show you how to do Quali. And also I'm not, I can't like write it out on the screen very well with, not with my mouse. So I'm gonna have to come up with a better way to represent it. I'm working on how to represent it the best. I also couldn't figure out how to do the division, but that's, that's besides the point. <laughs> Anyways, eventually I will. Any Tlatlanilistli? I just want to make sure on the word yonse, uh, the mm -hmm. stress is on the yon syllable, is that right? Ah, uh, I see. Well, it's really two separate words, but they write it as one. So I usually hear them say it like this, yonse. <laughs> so it sounds like that. the is loudest, right? So yeah. I personally think that even though it's written as one word, it's really pronounced as two separate words, that's yon and se. So when I hear them say, they say yonse. They don't say yonse, like you would expect as one word, right? So I think it's really two separate words, but they generally write it as one. Good to know. Even though my stress is probably what I have to work the most on because I never say these words out loud until we're in the live class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you gotta practice. And if you notice, I'm starting to add more sentences um, so that you can start building sentences. That's the whole goal. And we're actually pretty close to like finishing course number one, like the basic fundamentals. And then we're eventually getting, like, I believe once I start course number two, it's gonna be like learning the past tense, the future tense, all the different tenses. There's about like eight or nine tenses. And we're gonna go through them one by one. My goal isn't necessarily to make you learn all the vocabulary, not yet at least, 
because I think you should learn how to use the language first, like how it actually works. And then the, the vocabulary is just memorization and reading and writing a lot, which you kind of have to do on your own or practicing a lot. But eventually I think in course number three, we can do like, um, where I, I wanna focus more on like stories. So like focusing on poems, stories, songs, et cetera, things that actually matter or make sense. And that way I think is the best way to learn vocabulary in my opinion. Let's see if people had questions on the chat. So I see people. Ah, yeah. Did you say pilsin or pilitzin? I said pilzin. Pilzin. P I L T Z I N. That's another word that means small. I forgot to add that. Pilzin. How do I access the homework? The link on the description keeps saying error. Really? Let me check that. It shouldn't say error. Let me let me go check. Uh, let me go check my YouTube and see. That's weird. It shouldn't have an error. If it, if that one has an error, then they'll all have an error. And I basically copy the same link. Oh, you know what it it could be? No, oh, I never changed the link, did I? All right, let's go. Uh, where's my class? Uh, we're the third group the shy group <laughs> you're the shy group you're yeah you're all the shy group <laughs> okay so you're saying that the, that the class this link doesn't work class lights oh that's not cool what's going on Okay, huh, let me see. Is that the old link maybe? But there shouldn't be an old link, the link should be the same. Okay, let me see, let me copy the link. Drive.google.com. That's not good, that means that other, other ones might have the wrong link. Okay, shareable link. OMG, get the link. Okay, well, let me, let me, um, let me copy and paste the link right here in the class. And then I, let me send it to you. I don't know what, I, I usually link it to that one called Nahuatl All right, let me cl click on that and tell me if does it work or not. It should, I don't know why the other one doesn't work. Oh, um, maybe I, okay, that one works. So maybe the, the other one has, huh. Okay, so maybe the other one just has some, either an old link, but the links I thought were always the same. So I need to update all the links and make sure that they all match this link because as far as I thought, they were all the same. <laughs> okay, well, go to, now that you know that that one works, I'm gonna update at least the most current video and make sure that the link matches exactly this link. And then I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll go there. Um, but essentially go to that link and then that's gonna take you to this one, Tlamachtilistli and Chantekit. And then some of the files like Tlachiwalistli, this is the verb chart, prepositions. This is a short um, list of prepositions, but there's actually longer. And then it'll take you to this PLF file, which is that personal, personal lexicon file that has the dictionary in it. And then you go to Chantekit, that's the homework. Tlamachtilistli is the lessons. So here you can go and look at each of the slides and then you can go read them, download them, do whatever you want with them. I really don't care. Uh, I think this information should be free. And, uh, and then you could go to the Chantekit and then you have the homework questions and answers. I've only done it up to uh, lesson 16 and I've been lazy on the last two lessons, I'm sorry. <laughs> Life is crazy, it's my excuse. <laughs> But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to catch up at one point, but right now I'm not caught up. But as of now, you have it up to Nikki and Moniki. Cool, and I'm gonna check that the links match. All right. Any other Tlatlani listly? I really thought this class was gonna last an hour. I clearly timed it wrong. But normally 
80 slides should be enough for now. Maybe those numbers went by really fast. Okay, you can tell us a story. <laughs> well, about what? What do you want a story to be about? About Nahuatl, about how I learned Nahuatl? Um, uh, I don't know. You can tell me a story. You could tell me why you learned Nahuatl or why you want to learn Nahuatl. But remember, this is being recorded. So if you don't want that out there, then you know, don't say it or at least type it. <laughs> and then you won't. If you don't want me to say your name, I won't say your name. I'll just say why or how you learned Nahuatl or why you want to learn Nahuatl. Uh, how did you learn about it and decide to study it? So I'll answer while other people are thinking about that question. I learned about it in um, in uh, in college. When I went to UC San Diego, I studied, uh, my major was biochemistry and cell biology, but I had to take a lot of um, humanities courses as part of uh, my curriculum. They made me take uh, classes that were not in my normal field. So I had to take about like 10-ish extra classes. And I decided to pick like anthropology, ethnic studies, histories, things like that. And uh, a lot of the classes that I took were in um, Mexican history. So I took a class on um, the conquest of Mexico. And then I had a writing class that focused on like different narratives on how, uh, how stories are made and how like the people who win wars are the ones who write the stories. And so the, the story that they decided to focus on was on the conquest of Mexico. And I basically read all the literature that they told me to read. And so many words were in there in Nahuatl. And I was like, oh my God, where do these words come from? And um, like, I just got curious about the language. And then at the same time that I was in college, I was also uh, doing um, Danza Azteca. So, um, because I was doing Danza Azteca, I was hearing people using Nahuatl words. Now, in retrospect, they were using very simple Nahuatl words. So I, so I thought I didn't know, but they were all mostly saying like, thank you. <laughs> Turns out they weren't that complicated. But at that time, I was like, oh my God, I completely don't know anything about this. I need to find out. So I went on my own in like 2013 to go search on my own to try to learn it on my own. And I had a really hard time uh, learning it. I had a hard time finding the, the information, which is why I am making these classes easily access, accessible. When I started in 2013, I really couldn't find very good resources or the resources I could find were all focused on classical Nahuatl and not actually people who wanted to speak. And because I wanted to actually speak and learn the language to speak it, I went and found like uh, native speakers on Facebook. And I also found uh, here a group in Los Angeles in 2016 that I joined. And that's how I started actually practicing what I had learned for about three years. I only knew from books what I was uh, reading. I could only understand like the grammar, but I couldn't actually speak. And what happened in 2016 when I moved to LA is that I joined that group and then we started practicing. I met like seven, eight-ish other people who were also interested. And as of right now, I still keep in contact with them. We still meet every Sunday on Zoom and we still practice Nahuatl. So, um, so after, once I joined that group, I got to meet other people who speak it and uh, I got fluent by practicing with a native speaker. So right now I, I am able to speak and understand for the most part unless it's a Nahuatl variety that's really fast or uh, one that I haven't heard, but generally I understand what the other person is saying. Um, and I'm able to communicate, pretty much say what I wanna say, even though I may not know all the words, I'm constantly learning just like everybody else. But yeah, how did uh, all of you hear from it? If you don't want me to use your name, I'll just read what you say and I won't say who said it. Of course, cause I know not everyone wants to be recorded. So I could say, oh, this person says, or a person thinks, or whatever. No, no one wants to say, no one wants to talk about themselves. I guess I'll briefly go. Um, I, uh, my dad is uh, indigenous Mexican. And uh, when he immigrated to the States um, and had me and my sibling, he, um, was suffering from, I think, really internalized racism. And he didn't teach me uh, Spanish, certainly not Nahuatl. Um, so I didn't really understand my heritage until I was about 19. And 
Um, it's been several years um, trying to learn how to decolonize myself. And I think it's really crazy that um, you decided to offer these classes. Like at the time I decided that I needed to learn now what to sort of learn more about my heritage and like show my dad what for. So um, yeah, that's why I'm here. And I can't thank you enough for helping me out. Well, you're welcome. I I'll say right now, even though um, there aren't that many, like there's a lot of stigma for people who want to learn indigenous languages because a lot of people, especially Mexico, don't value it. And so I'm glad to hear that you want to reclaim the person that you are. And um, uh, I'll say that I'm glad to be a resource because this is the kind of resource I would have wanted in the past. And so I'm deciding to be that resource instead of being like, oh no, like I don't want it to be difficult. In fact, I want it to be easy um, for you to find this information. Cause to me, it makes, it's weird that it's one, it's about a million and a half speakers and yet you can't really find a teacher. <laughs> I think that that's weird for a language that big, for being the second biggest language in Mexico. It is a weird situation that I don't, I don't think is right, which is why I make this available. So I'm glad to help you in this matter. And it's very sad that people feel ashamed of, you know, the languages that they speak. I don't think it should be that way. Um, can you hear me? All right, am I am I coming through? Is it? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, Edgar, we hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I, uh, I've been trying to learn it for a long time. Um, most of my friends are indigenous, and um, most of my family is indigenous. So I've been wanting to go back and you know learn this language. And, um, I think I've tried to over the the decades look up books that uh that had the you know some sort of teaching guide or anything like that but uh i could never find one that was uh available in a way that i could understand it and um get through it uh i think uh at a few maybe about 10 years ago i had a national endowment for the humanities fellowship where I attended, uh, you know, a seminar with a lot of scholars, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, uh, the uh, priests that were um, part of the conquistas and how they had translated uh, Nahuatl into, uh, you know, Spanish syllabics and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was really when I really peaked on me, and I and I wanted desperately to relearn this language somehow because I know that my ancestors spoke it. Um, mm. And so, you know, I've been searching for a long time and I found, you know, a lot of apps online. Uh, for sort of, I've been going through the numbers for, you know, <laughs> probably about two years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in these little apps and the seasons and the greetings and all that. But then I found you and that's the first time I found somebody who could teach it. Not only who could teach it, but who could provide me resources. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's uh, it's an achievement that's that I've been trying to get at for you know uh, uh, trying to to achieve for a long time to to learn this. I think going back to learn uh, your your native tongue uh, is the essence of trying to recapture you know, the identity of the indigenous ancestors, because to understand them in their language is to understand their culture. Mm -hmm. So um, one, these two things, it's kind of like you're teaching us that Mayan symbolism, uh, even though I'm sure that the Aztec symbolism is very similar because they borrowed mm -hmm. so much from the Mayan. Yeah, they, uh, they you know, did. these yeah. all connections are so beautiful and so deep and uh and the language reflects that that marriage between the symbolism like you were saying earlier and how simple it is to learn that uh that 20 count system uh if you follow the patterns of it and so these things must be reflective of other things 
in the culture, you know, that I'm, that it's teaching me. I may not know specifically at what, but I know that there are uh, similarities like that, that probably run, run through everything uh, in, that, that, that uh, indigenous peoples have from Mexico. So I'm, I'm very glad to, to have found you. Potlazocamate. Yeah, I was just like you, I would only find like phrases and words and I'm like, well, it's cool to know words, but if you don't know how to use them, it's not as helpful if you if you don't know how to work with the words. Because if you go in the dictionary and you look up now what words they'll give you the, the present tense, third person of the verb, but if you don't know how to use that verb, it's not that helpful. And also memorizing phrases, in my opinion, it works. But if you can use those phrases or to express yourself, well, you just have memorized phrases. And that's why my focus is on getting you to actually use the language, not necessarily focus on the vocabulary, because you have the dictionary, you have access to thousands and thousands of words. Um, it's just a matter of you knowing how to actually use the words. And now it's not that, that complicated in terms of like the grammar compared to like Spanish or English in terms of like conjugations. It, it has its conjugations, but it's not as complicated. And I also think even though the words are long, they're um, not terribly, like they're consistent at least. They're consistent in pronunciation. And so I don't think Nahuatl is that hard of language compared to other ones that I've been researching about. And I'm glad to be that resource. I, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, says James de la Rosa, or he says the timing was perfect. Tlazocamati, see, you are Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> um, uh, Liche says, I stumbled on this class just as I took a deeper interest in my brown roots and realized we have indigenous roots. It's funny how we often see Nahuatl words after learning about it. I know, right? Yes, you truly provide a wonderful service. Tlazocamati. Um, Yes, actually, even English has a lot of loan words from Nahuatl, which is, they came by way of Spanish. So there are quite a bit of Nahuatl words in Spanish, and then some of those words got borrowed into English. Uh, and someone says, it's about um, understanding where would you come from and where you're going. I agree, completely agree. Uh, after having learned it, I, I really, really enjoy it, and I enjoy teaching it. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to all the people who have taught me because I, I have learned now what a lot of it has been self-taught, but when I learned that group, which was led by Jan Garcia, which a lot of you have his book, I did learn a lot, but I didn't just learn about now what I also learned how to teach it and how to teach it in a semi more effective way than just making you memorize stuff, more being visual and being more repetitive. So I want to thank all the people who have taught me how to do that. <clears throat> For me too, it's it's also now I can go back and actually look at that scholarship and try to translate mm -hmm. uh, the Franciscan priests and what they try to write. There's a lot of poetry that they wrote down. There's a lot of things that uh, I couldn't pick up in. Uh, I mean, it was translated for us uh, during the class, but mm -hmm. uh, now I can go back and look at that and actually uh, make my own scholarship uh, out of this. Uh, uh, you know, understanding this language, and now I can go back, and even though it's in classical, uh -huh. uh, I can still now pick up a lot of it. That you know, uh, like like you were saying, once you learn the syntax and the grammar, it's very, very, very helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. Without it, you're just like saying words, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, that that you can't. I like the class of verbs that you, you know, who knew there were or three classes of war verbs and uh, things of this nature. Those are very, very helpful, and especially mm -hmm. in, in understanding that. Yes. And just be careful when you go into the classical and make sure that you verify the meanings of words, because I know that some meanings are definitely different. Like, for example, last time I was reading, I know the word nechka. Nechka in our variety means it's close by. But if you go look it up in a classical dictionary, you're going to find out that nechka means far away. <laughs> Not far away, but like far. I, I looked it up in my dictionary and it's not exactly the same. So there are some big differences like that. So just be aware about that. But for the most part, I'll tell you like 80 to 90% of it is exactly the same. It hasn't changed that much. So it is still helpful. All right. 
Tlazocamati Mia Kimo Juantin. Um, thank you all. I hope that you all have a good weekend. And Timoitase next week. Chikwegi Yok. Timoitase Tlazocamati. Timoitase.